Hello, welcome to my channel. Uh, one thing I've realized about making these videos, uh, I initially wanted it to be more of a learning lesson and I have learned my lessons. Oh, it is difficult to make something that is actually of good quality and uh, that something that is also educational at the same time. You find yourself using a lot of hours trying to make uh, these videos, trying to make the recordings, trying to piece everything back together. So if anyone was waiting to hear from me, I'm sorry it took so long. I've, I've been trying to do research before I compiled everything so that I can report on something that is factual, even if it might not be like uh, the gospel truth. So today I wanted to look into COVID-19 and why Africans are not getting affected as much as people would love to say we're not getting affected. Then we look into petty things that are popping up everywhere in the country. Starting with uh, the president giving 100 million Kenya shillings to artists. People who, who can sustain themselves in this quarantine. Anyway. Maybe not all of them can because we have seen some artists and celebrities actually break down on uh, on their accounts, Instagram, Facebook and the like. But this money was well deserved by low income families because we have majority of Kenyans earning less than 100 shillings in a day. These are people who need the money because at the moment they can't make any of that and even using that 100 shillings, it's not something that you can say that uh, provides them with the basic needs. So this, this money was well deserved by them and not people that, uh, people that have been making millions for the longest period, people that live in mansions, people that have a spare room to go and panic. These are people who have uh, maybe a single room to about five people at the same time waiting for that 100 shillings to come back in the evening so that they can have that one meal anyway and another thing i wanted to look into was the the facts about low-income earners and the reason the reasoning that the government or these celebrities telling us to stay home have when they say stay at home stay safe because yeah we we are going to stay at home most of us who are middle maybe low middle low income earners but what about that that person that cannot stay at home at all are you thinking about them because we have about 30 percent of kenyans actually living below the poverty line and i don't even know if it's 30 percent maybe it's more or less but i'm, I'm hoping it's less so I need I need to understand or I need to I need just to go through this and try and understand when they say stay at home and then what you should you should add that part in your statements stay at home and the government is going to do this stay at home and do this for yourselves stay at home and I'm going to do this not just stay at home because staying at home with nothing to do is the number one cause of anxiety, depression, and uh, the domestic violence that we've, we've seen rise in the previous days after the quarantine. So those are basically my headlines for today. Now, we the other day, I work in this company in Kenya. We have an Indian boss and uh, another one who, who is Indian but of Chinese descent and they were having this argument uh, my boss was saying that um, it's true that Africans are not getting affected by the virus and we the Africans in the office found it kind of offending but when we pushed to to get to the point or to get to the to his reasoning why he thought that we we were not dispendable during this virus the explanations actually made a little bit of sense because the the boss of chinese descent said that according to their studies in their country 
they found out that people that have been uh, maybe having good diet and it's not these these things that we are buying online this keto or what and what not the kind of diet that is good for your health having three meals in a day three healthy meals in a day knowing what you're putting in your body having food that is less exposed to chemicals or preservatives and you find most Africans or most Kenyans, we use that. We, our food is yet to be exposed to as much chemicals as developed countries. Then you find us Africans, there are these weeds that we take, especially here in Kenya, we have traditional vegetables that we take that are actually really good for us. Then another thing they pointed out was if you took tea, especially green tea, it was helping so much in fighting the disease off and making sure that uh, the body was well equipped to fight the disease. But I also, I didn't mention it to them, but ac according to me, I think the reason why Africans are not getting the virus is the, right, the wrong question, sorry. It's the wrong question. Because Africans actually are getting the virus, they might not show as big numbers as other continents are. And uh, I think I have two reasons why they may not be showing those big numbers. The first reason is we are yet to test people on a large scale. At the moment we are testing, yes, we have mass testing and it's it's happening everywhere in the country but we are yet to do like uh, let's say a hundred thousand people in a day are getting tested and the results are getting back the other reason might be uh, according to some of these medics they are saying that 95 percent of people are actually getting the disease they're not showing the symptoms the disease is not affecting them to the point that they need an ambulance to take them to the hospital and uh, those 95 percent of people that are getting affected mm -hmm are just showing flu-like symptoms and uh, it's not getting let's say more critical so you have these more let's say many africans or many kenyans might be carriers of the disease but uh, we can also say we can also say that uh, most africans uh, have this <laughs> immunity that is uh, according to doctors everywhere in the world we have this super immunity that is able to fight off the disease before even the symptoms get maybe darker those are amongst my reasonings though there are other there are several actually but those are the main ones there are some people who are saying Africans are not showing the symptoms because they are not being tested that one is actually true and uh, others are, are saying that africans are not prone to the illness africans are, are able to fight the disease yes we are able to do that thanks be to god <laughs> at least something is going right once in a while in this dark world of ours uh, the other thing i wanted to talk about was JCC and Kina Pasta Kuna. Uh, let me start by saying that I I don't have anything against them per se, but I don't like what they do. This is like a reality of sorts, a reality show of sorts that is that goes under the name we're serving God because we have them acting like a family let's say like the Kardashians somehow are <laughs> the religious Kardashians but they're not actually helping the people in the organizations too these people the people that serve them are suffering the organizations but these people are driving huge cars they have a car for every day and every person in the family they have mansions so when they started saying that they were not going to hold prayers for the country until the government paid them, these are the same people that were telling their own sheep 
to pray so that God can bless them. Why are not they why are they not praying to the same God to bless them? Why is this God only working for their servants, not them? And these are not uh, these are not the only people that I'm finding wrong in my own opinion when it comes to religion. You find most most religious leaders are taking this thing as if it's something that let's say they are taking it dismissively on a serious note you need to protect your condors you need to tell them the truth god can only help you so far he can't stop an illness from getting inside you like let's say like he can't stop corona from getting inside you maybe he can but not in ways that we would love to think of god operates in uh let's say what can we call it in um in the bigger scale of things not individually so when you tell people to come to church or to congregate that's not caring for them that's subjecting them to this virus and i understand that since people are on lockdown you're not getting your weekly donations but still this is time where you put your humanity before your greed just for once or for a moment just do that for your own condors on a serious note <laughs> on the same note I also understand why they would be asking for a stipend since the government was offering other people, artists and the like, a stipend for, let's say, I don't know, for entertaining Kenyans. I don't understand that. But then again, you find that uh, it's easier for people to cope with difficulties when you have, when you have um, difficult facing you and uh, when you also have you when you're also going through hardship finding distractions maybe will help you cope with that maybe that's what the government thought when they were issuing this type in. and i am not so sure if any artist uh, directed their statement to the people that actually need that money i'm not sure about that but then again, now to low-income families, they have to earn in one or another. They have to make money in this, in this pandemic. They have to find a way to survive. I don't. I I get it when people say stay at home. Yeah, we can stay at home. And then what are we going to do with our lives? What are what are they going to do with our lives? Let me put it that way. What are these people that need this money? These people that are losing their houses. These people that are being put on the street by their landlords for lack of rent. What are they going to do when you say stay at home? Do you know what you mean? Unless you have strategies for them to follow or things for them to do when you tell them stay at home. I'd rather you don't. I'd, I'd, I'd really rather you don't tell people to stay at home because every artist every corner of the world is telling you to stay at home these people don't have food in their house at all yes we were posting memes and laughing about finishing our snacks the first day of lockdown <laughs> but still these people didn't have the food even then so when you're telling us to stay at home telling people to stay at home i'm not saying it's it's the it's a wrong thing to do i'm just saying we need to sit back before we utter those words to know the audience to know the people that we're telling this to then after we figured that out we understand we need to understand very well that when we say stay at home and the audience that you're telling is to we know what we're saying finally i I have two, two points that Kenyans need to understand during this quarantine. The reason why we all need masks is because we haven't tested everyone or we have a majority of people that are not tested yet. So the government does not know how exposed they are to the disease. 
how many many people already have the disease in them so when you're being told to wear masks don't wait until you see law enforcers and then you wear it or you have the mask hanging on your neck wear it to cover yourself because you might be a carrier or you might be exposed to the virus just do that for us the other thing too stop spitting amongst the ways this this virus is being transmitted is through bodily fluids and we have majority of kenyans who don't understand that stop spitting everywhere because ugh, previously we were used to that and i think among the adverts that the government is running to help people not get the illness should be observe hygiene and stop spitting when you spit your bodily fluids are just floating in the air then you might infect someone or even a child who is maybe around you just stop spitting stop taking advantage of areas where you don't see law enforcers just this is an initiative for yourself the earlier we're able to get over this illness the faster we can now go back to rebuilding the economy that we need to on a serious note we need to come to the point where china is at the moment where they have no cases and now they can let people go out and go back to their houses i think that's all i needed to say and this is like the 10th recording i've done <laughs> i hope i'm improving by the way and um let's let's see each other another time uh stay safe wash your hands don't touch your eyes your nose your mouth uh, make sure you have 65 percent of alcohol in your not your body <laughs> but you sanitize us don't just buy any sanitizer make sure it has 65 percent of alcohol in it or you'd rather just carry a liquid soap with you that's even better than using the bacterial hand sanitizers and most of us i've also realized we don't know the difference between the two you have many people carrying hand sanitizers but they are bacterial not viral you need to buy sanitizers that are alcohol based and have uh, 65 percent of alcohol in them otherwise you're doing a lot of nothing see you another time subscribe comment tell me where i need to improve give me those points share it to your friends tell me what you need covered next time and until then have a nice time and uh, enjoy life we don't know if this is the end of the world or the beginning so enjoy it while you can have fun but have responsible fun <laughs>